Right, so next episode or continuing our series on building the world's most practical vehicle. Well, maybe world's most practical is quite a bold statement, but building a super practical vehicle, and we think the best way to make a practical vehicle is with a transporter. So if you've seen any of the other episodes, you'll know why. But anyway, let's start off with this one. So we've previously, um, if you go back through the old episodes, you'll see some of the bits we've done, the exterior styling and the suspension and the wheel choices. And this episode is moving on to the inside. So we're gonna cover quite a lot in this episode, we hope to. Anyway, so a few things. We're gonna show you a relatively cost-effective way to trim the seats and make them look a bit more luxurious without spending a fortune on a complete retrim. So we're gonna do carpet line and insulation and show you how to do what and where to get the right amount of sad deadening without going silly over the top and also how much of each piece of material you use where just to try and help you if you're doing your build. We're doing something different with the side panels this time so um, with the whole idea of this being really practical we've decided to go away from having carpet line side panels and use a different material which we'll show you. Added a bit of luxury with a halo headlining we'll go into that in a bit more detail but trying to keep it nice and bright and airy in there uh, and keeping that kind of bright colour instead of going for a darker headlining. So I made a mistake when I ordered this. I ordered two single front seats, but I forgot to tick the box for captain seats. So the passenger side doesn't have armrests. So we're going to show you how to fit armrests to the passenger seat. Because that's a must if you've got a single. It's uh, so much more comfortable if you can have your arms, arms out on an armrest while driving along. Uh, where else? What else have we done on this one? Van shades going in, of course. So the idea behind this thing is, like I said, super practical, but also able to camp in it was always the goal. Um, and yeah, van shades as opposed to any, anything else, just because really wanted to finish it off with a bit of luxury inside. Uh, and they are just dead practical. So interior wise, the uh, the Ivano Dog Edition is gonna come in in a future episode and also the audio upgrade. Just waiting for the bits through uh, to come through on that. We're gonna have got another couple of audio upgrade option videos coming in the next few weeks or so. One thing to mention on this, if you watched our previous episode, because we've been asked about it a lot. So you'll see that we put Bill Stein's B16 suspension on it. So this is a suspension that's not actually available. Uh, no intentions of ever actually making it, but they made it for us because the Tesla van, the van that we're putting the two Tesla motors in, needed something pretty special suspension for what we wanted to do for it. So they made us a set, this is a T32, that's a T30. They made us a T32 set to put on this to try out and see um, if it was suitable for what we wanted to do. Actually, what's happened is it's the most incredible suspension I've ever known. Um, it's so good. Um, whether you're on a motorway, whether you're cross country, like I said, uh, Nick drove this too, uh, Ben Nevis, uh, went camping with the kids for a few days and um, absolutely loved it, swore by it, whether it's a uh, hutty, um, rutty, hilly terrain or whether you're going down the motorways. <clears throat> the beauty of it is not, not that it would be average cup of tea to do this, but it's adjustable. So if you, you fit the suspension and, uh, so the hard thing is that what my opinion of comfortable is and what your opinion of comfortable is is two completely different things. The beauty with this suspension is, is you can adjust it yourself. Not that you would want to just lie down in your van willy-nilly on the side of the road, but you can. The, the adjusters on it, as you would have seen in the previous videos, are just clicks. And that you can go from being super hard to super soft. Almost too hard to almost too soft. But everybody will find a point in that suspension that they'd really like. Or you've got a massive motorway journey ahead of you. You want to set it a bit firmer. You're then going to go across up and down hills and you want it a bit softer. I'm not saying it's ideal but you can just click 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 and adjust it down again bill stein need to make the suspension I, I, it'll be expensive if they do um but there's a market for everything i'd pay the extra money well depending on how much it is but um yeah i don't know i think i think hopefully with the the miles that we put on this that they might be a bit more confident and see that there's possibly a market for it but i, I don't know that's a long time away anyway enough about the suspension Let's hand you over to the team inside. Various people are in there are doing various different points of this. Um, actually, some of it's already done, but we'll just feature the video like we're starting it now. But anyway, I'll hand you over to the guys. They'll do some work and um, let's get the inside. Look at this good at the outside.
It will only fit one way as well. You can't fit it that way. Just twist it until it locks. And then you'll need your M10 again. Annoying there because it goes into the chamber. Half the time this, this don't fit. But a quarter drive, 10 mil socket, fits it perfect. And then that will fit down your shaft.
So anyway, um, time to finish this video off. I was hoping for a bit of a dry spell, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So let's do it in the rain. Inside's pretty much finished, apart from the audio upgrade and the Avano uh, Dog Edition. So we'll show you what we've done, and then we'll feature that in another video. So let's take you inside. I'm sorry if there's rain on the camera. So starting at the front, first thing we've done is to give it a bit more of a luxury feel. We've had Neil come and trim all the seats. So I really like the OEM fabric finish. I just think it kind of really suits them without going for a vinyl finish or, or leather effect. Not a massive fan of the whole Bentley stitch thing. So we kind of thought we'd go a bit kind of Caravelle inspired and keep the original gray outsides uh, and then add Dynamica on the insides to just give it that more of a luxury feel without bust in the bank really because when you're keeping this fabric and you're just trimming the centers it's a lot cheaper than trimming the whole seat but still gives it that nice feel you see that we added armrests to this single seat because i forgot to miss them off uh, i forgot to add them on when i was ordering them as i mentioned before the audio upgrade will come in another episode and we'll do all the sound ending on the in um, the doors at the time so continuing that dynamic of finish right the way through to the back we've had the triple seats down which are now getting soaking wet um, in the matching finish but again that caravel kind of inspired look we're keeping those uh, ridges in it's got a 10 mil scrim foam just to give it that depth across all the seats there i just think it gives it a really nice luxury feel dynamic is really hard wearing and easy to clean so it's just a quality product really so you'll see this the same effect or the same finish same fabric here on the roof so dynamica we've moved over to dynamica from alcantara um, and only because there's a couple of things one price it's ever so slightly cheaper but two we found that the automotive grade dynamica is a bit more hard wearing a bit thicker and slightly more stretchy so they're both really high-end products and not cheap at all but you tend to find some brands use one some brands use the other so i think um yeah, bmw my phone's ringing two hours later so you tend to find that different manufacturers use one or the other. So the high-end stuff, BMWs, Porsches, you know, the high-end Volkswagens and stuff, will have what feels like a, a suede effect center, but it's normally Dynamica or um, Alcantara. So Dynamica, I think Porsche used Dynamica and the new BMWs all come with that Dynamica. And quite a few of the manufacturers, I think, are moving over to it, but um, we certainly have, and we're really impressed with it. It's still not cheap. That's the one thing to bear in mind. Um, so yeah, that's what we've done to the seats. Now you'll see also we've done the headlining. So we've kept the original OEM headlining with the original light coloured grey and then we've gone with a Dynamica that matches it pretty much exactly the same colour right the way through the back there in the halo headlining. So it just gives it that real sort of OEM feel with the colour, keeping the inside really dark instead of going for like a real dark finish up here, but keeping it nice and bright, keeping it kind of looking factory, but really sort of classy finish. Like I said before, it's not cheap stuff Dynamica, but you do get what you pay for the quality you can tell you can, there's obviously the cheaper sort of fake suede options you can do here but i tend to find you can spot the fake suede sort of faux suede stuff dead easy because it has a really deep pile and it tends to fade in the sun I'm not saying there's not it's not the right thing to do but just if you want a real high-end finish then invest the money in going for something quality like dynamica or alcantara as you'll see in the rear here we've got the halo so big fan of these things they're actually really easy to install they take some time um, but the instructions are really clear and they come with all the fixtures and fittings to make this halo effect. So we've gone with the carpet on the outer side, the Dynamica on the inside, and then a 6000K white seamless LED. So you can, I, I don't really particularly like it when you can see all these little dots, which is quite, you can on, um, even on some of our older vans before you could buy this 6000 cape solid tape LED. And I like the white, I'm not really um, into the colour effects, but they suit lots, they suit vans. It's just for me, I particularly like the white and the, and how clean and crisp it looks. So that's what we've got up there. These little um, down lights here, they've replaced the internal LEDs. So when you open the door, they come on instead. Uh, and then there's a little rocker switch just there for turning it on and off the halo. So just gives it a luxury feel. It's, it's nice and easy to clean if you need to, uh, relatively low maintenance, but it's got that really nice luxury kind of feel to it. So from there, obviously, as I said before, we wanted this van to be something you could sleep in as well as be a practical, usable vehicle for the dogs and for bikes and so on. So we've added van shades to it. Just ties in really nicely with the carpet on the edge there. Um, but yeah, they're just dead practical, black out the light, look really good, really well finished. Um, it's a step up from having curtains really but uh yeah re really finish of the vehicle so we've obviously had van shades on both sides and also on the tailgate the other thing you may, may have spotted here is the rock uh, mini tablet mounts so brilliant little bit of kit just clips to the headlining comes all the fixings you need and you can just clip that in there 
mount your iPad in there or whatever tablet you do use and then the kids can watch that while you're traveling along in the back and unlike all the other ones that seem to be on the market where you just have to fold them away and you still bang your head on them this one here just releases and you can pop a little cap back on just to make it a little bit look, look a little bit tidy when you're not using it and and quite discreet but great bit of kit that was one of my favorite finds for last year but we sell no end of them now um, but yeah just just a nice little finishing touch without being too ugly and garish but dead practical if you like my children sit in the back watching films on long journeys and leave us to listen to music in the front so anyway from there moving into the back obviously van shade up here again so the other thing that's quite different and obvious from the rear is we changed the way we went with the panels here so instead of carpet lining the panels on this particular van we decided to go for this vinyl vinyl finished boards so you, these are available on our website for whatever format you can, uh, whatever application whether it's short wheelbase long wheelbase camper uh, combi like this one with the seat belt slits in it there uh, sliding door motors as well like this one's got but the reason why we went for this and this one is because again trying to make it dead practical and make it dead usable and easy to clean carpet's great don't get me wrong and if you've got a camper probably a carpet is a nicer option if you want something a bit more cozy but with this being practical and dogs and bikes going in it and stuff this is just vinyl so it's just dead easy and wiped clean and i think finishes it off nicely looks a bit classy looks a bit different to the original um, carpet line effect just just something a little bit different but uh, works well in this kind of grey. The, these are also available with detailing. You can get like a diamond pattern in them again on our website. They're not cheap. I think they're 530 quid a set, but that's boards and everything that comes with everything you need. But just a different way to finish off the inside. And again, just makes it dead easy and simple and nice and white clean, white clean. Uh, and then we've added that on the back there as well. You can see in the, in the light. And then of course the van shade for the tailgate as well. So Hopefully you, you spotted earlier on when Blake was doing the carpet lining, we listed how much sound deadening and carpet and various different bits you would need as you went along just to hopefully help you when it comes to your build. Quantities and the amounts that we mentioned didn't include sound deadening for the front because we're going to feature that in a coming episode. So those, that amount, the amount of sound deadening was mentioned is based on this particular setup. <coughs> same goes for the carpet. So with the halo here, we've used the same amount of carpet as you would do if you were carpeting this whole piece, because you still need to carpet line this halo section here. She's looking for the Ivano dog edition. What are you doing? Ah, another one. Anyway, go away. Yeah, so you use, use the same amount of carpet here as you would have done um, if you were carpet lining the whole lot. M mentioned before, if you were carpet lining these as opposed to going for the leather effect panel. So it should, hopefully should help you understand and clear up how much you would need. It's pretty much, from the glue point of view, it's pretty much a can of glue per meter to help you kind of work out what you need to order if you're ordering it. Um, and these are obviously just clipped in a hidden panel clip so you can't see all the, uh, the original OEM clips. It just finishes it off a little bit nicer, I think. So that's this one finished off. This, the sound end and the insulation has made a massive difference there. Just how this feels to be inside, it feels a lot more car light now than you know, combis do. They kind of feel very commercial still because they're the echoiness of them, but just feels really nice and luxury. Uh, hopefully some of the things we've done in this video you'll find useful. It's just the little things about trying to make it practical where we've added the vinyl panels instead of the carpet lining. Going for the um, Dynamica headlining's probably a little bit OTT, but it just adds that luxury, but it is still relatively easy to maintain. If you're interested in the Halo headlining here, check out Plyworks, because it's a great kit. Comes with everything you need, comes with instructions. Like I said, it's not particularly easy to fit. Well, it's easy, it's just a little bit, it's time consuming. Uh, and you, you just got to get it right, but it's a great bit of kit. If you're in, more interested in the whole Halo thing, we are going to do a video pretty soon actually showing you how to actually how to install one and also how to do um, more of like a twinkly star style headlining like you see in the Rolls Royces. We're going to go all out and do a really fancy black one with a shooting a star in it and stuff like that. In fact, that's for the Hustle Made van that we've been working on. You may have seen in other episodes. So that's coming up pretty soon. We're going to do an audio upgrade on this, as I keep mentioning, and do the sound end on the front on this one, um, on this fan at the same time. So that will kind of finish off that, give it a nice bit of sound as well as looks and interior. Uh, where else from that? And then we've got the Ivano Dog Edition coming for this one, which loads of people have been asking about. I think Ivano have been harassed quite a bit about it since as well. So I've seen the drawings and it looks spot on. I think it's going to be a great bit of kit and hopefully something that they'll be able to retail if it works which I'm sure it will do. So if you found this video at all useful or interesting, please hit the like button. The whole YouTube algorithms likes all that and it shows it to more people. Uh, if there's anybody else you think is interested in it, please share it with them. And as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.